And in sports, we break down film from Iowa's tough loss over the weekend. Hey guys, happy Monday and welcome back to the Daily Iowan TV Sports Studio. We have a fully sex show, so let's get started. Down but not out, the Hawkeyes could not battle the Badgers over the weekend. I was at Kinnick Stadium on site to catch up with all the action. Whether it was the blistering wind or not, the Hawkeyes couldn't get enough flight on the ball in Saturday's matchup against the now 22 ranked Wisconsin Badgers. It was Wisconsin's starting quarterback Joel Stave who led his Badgers to a 28-9 beating over Iowa. In the Heartland Trophy, once again, stayed in Wisconsin territory. You know, it was tough to run the ball today for us, and uh, it was really tough for them, too, for about you know, 45, 50 minutes. So it's just, you know, it's going to happen sometimes. The Hawkeyes defense did bottle up the Badgers and held Wisconsin's running back Melvin Gordon to a season-low 62 yards. But even with the pounded out Iowa defense, or rather the lack of offense from Wisconsin, the Hawkeyes just couldn't pull through. I think it took a, uh, a lot of wear on us in the fourth quarter. Uh, we weren't really expecting it. We were just more looking forward to the play action pass, which they, um, they made an adjustment to us, and we just didn't really pick up on it. So that's more credit to them. The offense struggled as well, especially after Iowa quarterback Jake Rudolph was knocked out of the game after an intercepted pass from Wisconsin's quarterback Darius Hillary at the Iowa 20. Uh, he couldn't have gone right away, but he could have gone back in later on. It just didn't seem, seem smart to put him back at that point. Although we don't know the status of Iowa's starting quarterback Jake Rudolph's injury yet, we do know for sure that whoever starts next weekend in Purdue will have to take better care of the ball if the Hawks want to return to postseason play. Reporting from Historic Kinnick Stadium in Iowa City, Iowa, Alyssa Brigamini, Daily Iowan TV Sports. It's Monday, which means there's film to break down from Iowa's game, and Cody Goodwin is here to do just that. Cody, Jordan Kanziri came in and ripped off a long run. What happened here? It was the longest run Iowa had all game against Wisconsin. If we bring up the film here, notice C.J. Beathard's kind of making adjustments there at the line, sees what Wisconsin's defense has given him, and then once he gets back under center, Wisconsin defense didn't look like it changed all that much. The arrows are showing where Iowa's offensive line is going to go. That's going to open up a huge hole on the left for Kanziri. Right here you see Kanziri jut to his left, a wide open hole. Probably could have driven a tank through that hole, Alyssa, through the offensive line. Kanziri bolting all the way down the line, take it down there. It was a really great run there by Kanziri. Good adjustment by Beathard. And um, Jake Rudock, he threw an interception late in the game to end Iowa's game. What what was going on here? Well, Rudock here had a little bit of a missed blocking or miscommunication, I guess, with Mark Wiseman. We bring up the play, and Mark Wiseman, you'll see, is in the backfield. He's not pictured right here, but he stops. He's circled right there, and as the play continues, Wiseman actually doesn't get the best block on Wisconsin's defender right there, number 36. So he falls to the ground and really just kind of makes way for Wisconsin defender to get a clear shot at Rudock. Kind of disrupts the rhythm and his throw, and he just kind of throws up a duck, and Wisconsin's able to come down with the pick. All right, well, thank you for that, Cody. And we continue our coverage of everything black and gold this week with your latest edition of the Whip Round. Guys, take it away. Thanks for that, guys. Another week, another switch near the top of the BCS standings. Alabama remains at number one, but for the third straight week, Florida State and Oregon flip-flop for the number two spot. In the Big Ten, Michigan State jumped five spots to number 17, and Wisconsin remains number 24. Well, that's all for now, but tune in tomorrow where, as always, we'll be at Kirk Ferentz's press conference ahead of the Hawks' matchup against Purdue. Guys, back to you two.